The James Webb Space Telescope just keeps rewriting the rules of the universe, and its latest feat is nothing short of mind-blowing. By taking an extraordinarily deep look at GNZ-11, one of the oldest and most distant galaxies ever observed, it has revealed a cosmic puzzle that is shaking up everything we thought we knew about the early universe, black holes, and galaxy formation itself. This galaxy acts like a time machine, offering a glimpse into an epoch when the universe was just beginning to take shape, and hidden within it is a black hole that appears to defy the fundamental laws of physics as we understand them. Back in 2015, GNZ-11 was already a superstar among astronomers. It was spotted by the Hubble Space Telescope and quickly became famous as the most distant galaxy ever observed at the time, with a redshift of Z tilde 11.1. To put that into perspective, this redshift means we're seeing it as it was just 400 million years after the Big Bang, when the universe was only about 3% of its current age. Imagine that, the universe was essentially a newborn, a hot, dense, chaotic place where the first galaxies were only beginning to form, yet here was GNZ 11 already shining brightly, packed with stars and complex structures far beyond what astronomers expected from such an early time. When the James Webb Space Telescope became operational in 2022, Astronomers naturally turned its ultra-powerful infrared instruments toward GNZ-11 to see it in even greater detail. Webb's sensitive infrared detectors are ideal for studying the early universe because light from these ancient objects has been stretched to longer, redder wavelengths by the expansion of space itself. Using its near-infrared spectrograph NIR spec, instrument, Webb confirmed GNZ-11's extreme redshift with unprecedented precision, cementing its place as one of the earliest and most distant galaxies ever studied. But what Webb found went far beyond simply confirming GNZ-11's age and distance. The real surprise, the thing that has scientists reeling, was hidden in the data about its inner structure. Instead of being a small, scrappy collection of stars slowly clumping together, which is what you'd expect for such an ancient galaxy, GNZ-11 is astonishingly bright and compact, like finding a fully furnished mansion in a neighborhood of mud huts. It's a cosmic fossil from a time when most galaxies were primitive and chaotic, yet this one seems almost unnaturally mature. Digging deeper, astronomers realize that GNZ-11 isn't just a galaxy. It's also home to something monstrous at its center, a supermassive black hole roughly 6 million times the mass of our sun. Even that by itself is shocking because according to our standard theories, black holes of this size shouldn't even exist so early in cosmic history. But it gets even weirder when you look at how this black hole is behaving. Black holes themselves are invisible, cloaked behind their event horizons, points of no return from which not even light can escape. But when they feed on gas and dust from their surroundings, that material forms a blazing hot accretion disk that shines incredibly brightly, often outshining entire galaxies. This blazing core is called an active galactic nucleus, or AGN. The AGN in GNZ-11 is emitting an astonishing amount of light, indicating that the black hole is devouring matter at an extraordinary rate. So extraordinary, in fact, that it appears to be violating something called the Eddington limit. The Eddington limit, named after astrophysicist Arthur Eddington, is like a cosmic speed limit for feeding black holes and stars. When matter falls into a black hole, the infalling gas gets compressed and heated to extreme temperatures, generating intense radiation. That radiation, in turn, pushes back against the incoming material in a cosmic tug-of-war. If the black hole tries to consume matter too quickly, the outward pressure of the radiation gets so strong that it essentially blows the infalling material away just like trying to pour too much water into a glass and having it spill over the sides. The Eddington limit defines the balance point, the maximum rate at which a black hole can feed without blowing its food away. For a black hole the size of the one in GNZ-11, the Eddington limit suggests it should be able to swallow about the mass of the sun every few decades. But the data from Webb indicates this black hole is devouring material at a rate about five times higher than that limit would allow. That's not just fast, it's absurd according to the laws of physics as we know them. It's as if you watched someone empty an entire swimming pool into a teacup without spilling a drop. Roberto Maiolino, an astrophysicist from the University of Cambridge who led the team studying this anomaly, called it a true game-changer. He pointed out that it's not just the feeding rate that's weird, it's the very existence of such a massive black hole at such an early time. The universe was less than a billion years old back then. Conventional wisdom says supermassive black holes need billions of years to grow that big. Typically, they're thought to start as small seed black holes a few hundred times the mass of the sun, formed from the deaths of the earliest massive stars. Over time, they grow by slowly accreting gas or by merging with other black holes, gradually becoming the titanic monsters we see in the centers of mature galaxies today. But GNZ-11's black hole is already a giant, devouring material at breakneck speed, 
with no sign of slowing down. It's like finding a fully grown T-Rex in a nursery full of baby dinosaurs. It just doesn't add up. Scientists are now scrambling to explain how such a thing could exist. One leading idea is that the early universe might have been a kind of all-you-can-eat buffet for black holes. Right after the Big Bang, the universe was much denser than it is now, filled with vast clouds of hydrogen and helium gas. These clouds could collapse under their own gravity with remarkable speed, feeding black holes with an abundance of raw material. Maybe some black holes got a head start in this rich environment, ballooning to massive sizes in just a few hundred million years. Another possibility is that early black holes didn't grow in the slow, steady way we imagined. Instead, they may have experienced wild growth spurts, merging rapidly with other black holes or even swallowing entire star clusters in chaotic cosmic pileups. This kind of violent early universe behavior could have allowed them to skip the slow evolutionary track entirely, reaching supermassive status far faster than conventional theories predict. But wait, it gets even more complicated. Some researchers are starting to wonder if we've been misreading GNZ11's light altogether. A team from Oxford University took a closer look at its spectral data, which reveals the chemical fingerprints of the elements present in the galaxy. When astronomers analyze a galaxy's light, they can see what it's made of, because elements like nitrogen and oxygen are forged in stars and scattered by supernova explosions. The relative abundance of these elements offers a detailed history of a galaxy's star formation and evolution. In GNZ11, the ratio of nitrogen to oxygen is four times higher than what we see in the modern universe. That's not just a little odd, it's a cosmic red flag. It suggests that something other than a supermassive black hole might be responsible for the extreme brightness we're seeing. Could it be that GNZ11 is powered not by a black hole, but by a dense cluster of massive, short-lived stars whose combined winds and supernovae are producing incredible amounts of energy and enriching the surrounding gas in strange ways? Or perhaps we're looking at some entirely new type of object or process that doesn't fit neatly into our existing categories. Whatever the answer turns out to be, one thing is clear. GNZ11 and the James Webb Space Telescope's astonishingly detailed view of it are forcing us to rethink the very foundations of how the early universe worked. This one galaxy is a cosmic Rosetta Stone, offering clues about how the first stars, black holes, and galaxies formed, and posing new mysteries that will keep astronomers busy for decades to come. In the end, GNZ11 reminds us that the universe is still full of surprises and that the quest to understand our cosmic origins is far from over. This discovery doesn't just rewrite our theories about black holes or galaxies. It challenges our entire picture of cosmic evolution in the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang. For decades, astronomers thought of the early universe as a relatively quiet, predictable place. Sure, it was hot and dense right after the Big Bang, but once it cooled enough for the first stars to form, the standard model suggested a gradual, orderly buildup of structure. Small galaxies would merge over hundreds of millions of years to become bigger ones. Black holes would begin as tiny seeds and grow steadily over eons. But the extreme properties of GNZ11 suggest that the early universe was anything but tranquil. Instead, it may have been a turbulent, violent environment where gas clouds collapsed rapidly, black holes fed at insane rates, and massive galaxies assembled shockingly early. If so, our models of cosmic structure formation need a serious overhaul. Computer simulations of the early universe will have to account for these rapid processes, and it's not clear yet how they can. One possibility is that the physics of gas accretion is simply different in the early universe. Maybe the intense densities and temperatures made it easier for matter to overcome the radiation pressure that normally limits growth. Or perhaps magnetic fields, turbulence, or exotic forms of dark matter helped funnel gas into black holes far more efficiently than in the modern universe. Each of these ideas is being explored right now by theorists trying to keep up with Webb's flood of new data. There's also the tantalizing possibility that we're on the verge of discovering completely new physics. Some researchers have suggested that the apparent violation of the Eddington limit might point to phenomena we don't yet understand, perhaps some exotic behavior of radiation and matter under extreme conditions. Others wonder if even more radical explanations could be in play, such as modifications to our understanding of gravity itself in the very early universe. While these ideas are speculative, they show how far-reaching the implications of GNZ11's black hole really are. Of course, Webb's observations of GNZ11 are only the beginning. The telescope is now surveying dozens of other extremely distant galaxies, many of them from the same early cosmic epoch. Already, astronomers are finding more evidence of surprisingly massive black holes, unexpectedly mature galaxies, and bizarre chemical signatures that don't fit our standard timeline. Each new observation is like a puzzle piece that either